Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This video was not planned, at least not for today, but the opportunity came up, so here we are. And what I have going on is a nice little uh, Skinner 5200 steel. It's finished ground, and I went ahead and started tempering out the spine, and I was not careful enough and got the colors run down very close to almost to the edge. So that's no good. It needs to be re-hardened and tempered in order to be the kind of blade that it needs to be. Now, obviously, at this stage of the game, re-hardening and uh, you know reheat treating this blade is going to be present some challenges. I'm, I'm going to have some warping or crinkling issues at the edge, most likely, and uh, I'm aware of that. But one of the main reasons I'm going to go ahead and try to reheat treat this is to try out an idea. A couple months ago, in the farm store, I found this, which is a Rust-Oleum spray paint that is a high heat product, so it's supposed to uh, resist heat up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty high. And when I saw this, I immediately thought of possible applications in heat treating to preclude the uh, decarburization and scaling issues that you get in an, atmos in an atmosphere um, kiln, etc. Now, you're not supposed to use this for direct contact with flames, even though there are flames on the thing, but the back says not to. So we should be fine in the kiln, no direct contact with flames, and I'm hoping that I can use this to reheat treat this blade and all other potential issues aside, not run into any kind of decarburization and scaling that we would need to grind off because we don't really have anything to grind off. Obviously, during a normal procedure and when I heat treated this the first time, there's enough extra material and extra steel there to do that, to grind that off, and it's not an issue. But aside from screwing up a blade, there are applications in which guys like to put a piece of steel in for heat treat that has the finish on it that they want at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the project. So, you know, whatever that is, grinding to a finished ground uh, size, or maybe it's some kind of fittings, whatever. All that to say, if this is a inexpensive and effective means of protecting your steel from decarb and scaling, it's worth a shot, so let's try it. Okay, so I've cleaned the blade off with acetone, got the paint shook up, and uh, it should be warm enough out here to dry. We're at least, I wanna say, five to 10 degrees above, oh great, minimum temperature range. Plus it's a uh, safety orange, so you know what they say, safety third. dripping. So it's obviously dripping off here. I'm trying to get adequate coverage, but I can still see, you know, steel shining, coming through a little bit, which I don't think is going to be good. So I might have to do a second coat. Wait, this, wait for this to dry just a little bit. So obviously what I'm primarily concerned with is the blade. So I'm going to just touch up a couple spots where I see steel exposed way it's sort of sitting on there. But isn't that funny? That looks like right here, that looks like a orange hot, red hot blade. It's pretty funny. All right, so I went ahead and put it in the toaster oven on warm to speed up the drying process if possible. I don't wanna try this until the paint is completely dry. So let's talk about a couple of things that might go wrong here. First of all, the paint might just simply come off when we get up to nearly 1500 degrees prior to quenching. It's always a possibility, I don't know. I'm not sure what to expect there, so we'll see what happens. Secondly, and I don't expect this, but there is a possibility that the paint on the steel is going to somehow insulate or affect the uh, conduction or uh, conduction of a heat in the quenchant during the quench. And if, if that's the case, that's gonna be a problem because we need, need that uh, steel to lose that heat at the appropriate rate in the quenchant. Additionally, I am concerned about the possibility of the paint coming off in the quenchant, in the oil, when you uh, basically shock that steel from about 1475 down to, you know, around 800 degrees or a little bit less. That could affect the paint's ability to hold on, and that's quite possible, actually. So, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and use a can of 11 second oil that I don't use anymore since I purchased. Uh, five gallons of AAA. They're very similar. Uh, AAA is a 10 second oil. The 11 second oil should be sufficient, uh, sufficient cooling rate for the 50 to 100. In worst case scenario, I ruin a couple gallons of oil that I don't actually use anymore. So that's what I'm gonna do there. And other than that, I don't really have any expectations of terrible failure or anything like that. 
Um, I am expecting some issues with the thinness of the blade, like I mentioned earlier, but that doesn't have anything to do with the paint. So let's uh, fire up the kiln and get this thing going. Okay, it's been a couple hours, I think, something like that, and uh, this, is, uh, this is dry. I think it's dry enough. It's not cured per se. I'm not gonna wait and, you know, see if that makes a difference. We'll try it like this. And I've really got quite a heavy coat on here, which probably would have been better to do a couple of coats, but I think it'll work. So we've got the kiln going. We're gonna throw this in and see what happens. All right, that's gonna continue heating up to 1,475 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna let, let it soak for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna quench it. Okay, I've got my ammo can of 11 second oil. It's kind of sealed. Come on. There we go. Get this set up right here. Okay, we are just about getting up the temperature here. I'm gonna do a quick peek. I'm curious to see what it looks like. Is the paint glowing? What, what does it look like in here? Okay, you can see that in there. Yeah, it's, the blade's glowing. Um, it doesn't look much different than it normally does, actually. Um, so, we'll let this heat up and soak, and we'll uh, go ahead and quench it and see what happens. I hit the bottom of the <laughs> of my tank there. Oops. <laughs> Look at that. Totally, oh man. I'm used to having an adequately sized tank. Anyway, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that cooled very quickly. Not much steel there to cool. Um, let's uh, see, see how it fared. Okay, so it's already cool enough to mostly cool enough to handle and yeah that's pretty special look at that this is a new hook blade design actually i'm developing not really so that's going to get ground off and i'm surprised actually that we really don't have first of all it's really quite straight and i didn't end up with hardly and there's a little bit of a wobble right here which is not at all surprising based on how thin this is, but overall it turned out very straight. So I guess that's uh, one of the benefits of using a coolant that's not overly fast for what you're doing. But let's see, uh, let's kind of see how hard it feels right here. <laughs> Quite hard. Oh yeah. So on a piece of steel this thin, soaking that for 20 minutes, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna decarb that and it would normally be soft, at least feel somewhat soft. And as it sits right now, that's, that's hard. That did not, in my estimation, that did not decarb any significant level whatsoever, if at all. Now, as you can see, it appears that our paint came off in some areas here during the quench. And um, I, I think the gray is actually where the paint's still on. Because on the black, I think that's where the oil was able to contact. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe the paint came off later on these spots or something. Because that's like soft. Maybe that's where, that's really weird. See that's soft right there, it's almost like that. Is that steel, is that clean steel? It feels like raised, so I can't tell if that's the paint. This black area here, that's hard. That's hard as a, as a rock. <laughs> that is fully hard and like my file is just scraping off the uh, light. I guess that's just oil. Yeah, it gets down to the actual steel there. It's fully hardened, I'm not detecting any decarb at all. So these little gray areas here, can't tell if that's still paint that's on there, I believe that's what it is. 
or it's a spot where somehow or another the paint was compromised or actually I don't understand exactly what happened here because that feels soft. That's not that's actually steel. So it appears what happened here is these little areas where for whatever reason that paint didn't actually seal. That's so weird. I don't get it because yeah that's decarbed steel right there. It's soft because obviously the carbon carbon's been cooked out of it. So I don't really understand. I think maybe it's the way that I applied the paint. If I had put on a thin coat, let it dry, put on another thin coat, let it dry, I think we would have had better results than what I did, which was just kind of soak it down, soak it on there. But where it did adhere and stay, man, yeah, that obviously came off in the quench, which is one thing I was suspicious of happening. Or afraid of happening so I mean that is a consideration I don't want to be dumping paint into my normal quenchants over and over definitely not something I'd want to do it's gonna cause contamination issues for your quenchant but as a stopgap of some kind if necessary to protect your steel during a typical carbon steel heat tree process this shows significant promise. Okay, always an opportunity to check the uh, grain structure on your steel. <laughs> okay, so my camera says it's focused, but I don't know if it is or not so much. Anyway, that grain structure looks great. No distinguishable grains so that's a success. All right, well, upon further inspection, the blade does have a pretty good wow in it right there. And honestly, that's not nearly as bad as what I expected and certainly to be expected for a piece of steel this thin. And uh, you know, I could probably grind the blade back about three eighths of an inch and come up with a nice usable blade, which I'll probably do and use it for testing. Of course, being careful to stay away from those decarb spots. But uh, overall, pretty good. It's got a little bit of a bow in the spine that's easily uh, fixed if you're careful with the torch, which, which I wasn't in the very beginning of this process. Anyway, I would say that this has been a success, and although my paint application does leave a bit to be desired, apparently, where the paint did adhere and stick, uh, I think it did, appears to have done an admirable job of protecting our steel from the atmospheric conditions at high heat. So, perhaps this is a little tool you can throw in your toolbox in the future it might help you out and if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel at all feel free to visit my website firecreekforge.com i have knives and hatchets and axes sometimes things like that for sale of course there's always patreon you can check the link below so as always thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video